What's going on beautiful people? This right here is a tank I set up a while ago. It's turned into some big round moss ball thingy. <laughs> now all the fish you can see in here were bred by me. So what I'm gonna do is like group them all up, take them back to the shop. They can sell them on, whatever they wanna do with them. And then we get some new fish for this tank. And um, I feel like I'm sort of giving back a bit as well then. <laughs> now the moss has obviously got to go, but there are actually a lot of really good plants still in here. I'm, I'm not breaking the tank down because it's unhealthy or anything. In fact, quite the opposite. It's absolutely thriving. The plants and that look fantastic. Look at these plants all on the top here, actually growing out of the water. They look so good. So I'm gonna save a lot of the plants. I might not necessarily use all of them again, but definitely some of them. And this guy's right here. Let me just clean this off so you can see. This is why I like to use the bag system because, you know, I like to redo my scapes every six, seven months, something like that. Some of them a bit longer, but the, what I tend to do now is put these bags of Aquasoil in the bottom, look. There's Aquasoil in there and there's a bit of gravel in that as well. And it means that I can now take this out and reuse it because those plants were growing fantastic. So there's no reason they shouldn't carry on. Oh, there's a little auto there, get back. <laughs> and look, I know a lot of you like ask the question, why don't you just keep one or two going for two years, three years? I'm just not interested, I'm not interested in that at all. What I like doing is seeing the tank progress from the start to the point where I consider it done. Like it looks amazing, it looks great. And at that point, it's just a case of keep trimming it back. That's not fun for me. One or two trims, then I'm moving on. So throughout this video, guys, I'm gonna be using multiple products from API. Now, many of you know, API are full channel sponsors. have been supporting me for well over Oh, a year and a half, getting on for two years soon. So they are a massive contributing factor in the ability to be able to have all these tanks, you know, energy bills are expensive nowadays and water changes, water bills, all of that. So they support the channel, which is why I have no problems in recommending their products to you guys. You all know how, how often I use all this stuff and the evidence is all around us how good the products are. Yeah, so it's not just some usual sales pitch, it's actually methods I use day in, day out for the success I'm getting. Hopefully you can too. The links are in the description to all the products as well guys happy watching happy watching does that make sense on with the video <laughs> So we now have our tank nice and clean, ready to go. I love this part. Now down here in this bucket is where we've got the aqua soil. I'll just open it up so you can have a little bit of a, a better look at it. I mean, most of you have seen aqua soil, so I don't know why I'm doing this, but look. So yeah, there we go, look. Just little balls of aqua soil in this media bag. I'll leave links to the media bags. It's all plastic, so nothing rusts and it works so well, I do it in all my tanks now. So for instance, this tank here has got it all in the bottom layer. The rainbow fish tank here has got it all in that bottom sand layer as well. The same story over here with the African fish aquarium. The same in this Amazon aquarium as well, and in fact, the one next to it. <laughs> yeah, basically all of them. So yeah, we wanna put this in as the bottom layer. There's some roots on it, get some off, but I'm not too worried. That just shows how well they work. The roots can penetrate the little holes in the bags absolutely fine. And then the other side as well, if it stops dripping. There we go. So yeah, look, flatten out all the soil inside the bags because you don't want it coming up too high, do you? In fact, I'm going to flip it. I'm going to do that and that way as well. Actually, right in the middle would be perfect because that way we've got nutrients everywhere. Um, I've completely muddied the tank. It doesn't matter, it's all getting capped. So stuff in the foreground will grow towards it, stuff in the background grow towards it. We can put some root tabs in that full front area and back area as well, so we're completely covered for nutrients. Now, remember before when we cleaned up the tank, it was all that gravel on the top. I've obviously still got that and I will be using it now to fill out the gaps. So yeah, background area first. Filling in all this void at the back and then a little bit in the foreground as well. Not too much because I don't want it to uh, be too high in that front area. Just a little bit of a ramp up. These stones actually go really well together. The decorative gravel and then this sort of orangey stuff as well. Yeah, it works quite nicely. You won't see any of it though because I'm capping it over the top with some sand. Now this obviously doesn't look very special at the moment, does it? But it doesn't matter at all. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to be too neat. Well, that's not a nice noise, is it? <laughs> I'm just getting some of this stuff out of the foreground so you don't see it. Because we want to have a clean sand in the foreground for this one. And clean up those backgrounds as well. Look, just This is a 
flattening tool, but I normally use it just for cleaning the glass. <laughs> so now I'm gonna use API root tabs. These are amazing. Like all those lush plants you see in all these tanks, every single one of those tanks has root tabs in them. And if I keep a tank going longer than a few months or so, which, you know, quite often I don't, but you know, five or six months, I put even more in. You can see some deficiencies in the leaves. They're going a little bit yellow, that kind of thing. You get these tabs in there. They're so good. They've got iron, potassium in them, and they just, just get that real good, strong root system going in that base layer. So I'm gonna put some of these now in that gravel part. Yeah, it's all quite simple really. It's just a case of popping them out. And I like to sort of break them in half in my thumbs. One, two, uh, one can go back there. That one can go there. You know, space them out a little bit. And I'll probably use about six tabs in total for this whole um, build. We've got the soil as well, remember. If I was just using sand, I'd probably use like this whole pack, to be honest, and cover everywhere. Just follow what's on the back of the instructions, though. I mean, I very rarely do that. I <laughs> just do what I want. There we go, nutrient sorted. Now ready for that sand capping layer. Actually, thinking about it, I'm gonna add a little bit more stone because I wanna have a good thickness to be able to plant into with the sand on top of. Right, we've got the nutrients and the substrate sorted there. There's plenty of media to plant into, plus we're gonna have another inch on top of sand as well. Now the stems will go in the sand and then the roots will work their way through the gravel and into the like nutrient layer at the bottom of the aqua soil. And this worked absolutely perfectly last time, as you can see from the plants, so I don't see why it shouldn't this time as well. Now here's my sand, I've got it down here, look. Really nice little sort of medium grain sand, real natural color. And I don't particularly want to see all of this in the foreground, so a little trick, is to pull it back as you pour it in and you won't see it. And then now we can just cap the whole lot. Now make sure that you're getting a pretty even covering, but also build it up a little bit extra where you know it's gonna be a load of plants. So up in this area, I know I'm gonna be putting the majority of the plants, so I'll just put a little bit thicker there. There we go, looking good. That gives us a solid foundation to build from. And you can see I've got that height in that back corner. So it's coming down this way for triangular composition, which means that our inlet and outlet for our filter are in a really good place as well. I'll filter wise, guys. It's just a cheap all pond solutions one. Um, it's been working for a long time and does a really good job. Right, next up, we can start putting in our hardscape. This is fun. This is a really fun part. I went to the shop recently and got some new wood as well. So yeah, this is the stuff right here I've got. It's Mayapani, Mayapony wood? Hang on, Mopani wood. I just looked it up. M-O-P-A-N-I wood. It's really dense and heavy. I think it will leach some tannins, but I'm not too worried about that. What changes will fix that? Now, rocks-wise, I got some sweet little sort of river, river rocks. Ribble. <laughs> I don't want to be using too many of these because I'm going to be mainly like using plants for the escape. These are basically going to be in place to hold the wood up. Okay, I really like that, but I feel like I want the whole thing back a little sort of, I don't know, about 10 centimeters that way. And then it's got more swim room in this foreground area. I'm not massively worried about the finer details with this because um, the whole idea is that there's loads of plants coming in between all of these and you're just seeing a little bit of the sort of outward prongs of wood and that's it. So yeah, I'm just gonna shift it back in a little bit. It should give us more space. There we go, that's working so much better. I can bring out some more of the stones in the foreground, details around them, plants, that sort of thing. Yeah, that'll work beautifully. Now, as always, none of this wood has ever been in water, so it will definitely just float up. So we're gonna use our cyanoacrylate super glue gel to stick it all to those rocks. Fish safe, shrimp safe, plant safe, stay safe. <laughs> Okay, now this is a part of the build where we can go from having something that looks kind of bland, kind of sort of plain, uh, and you can really bring it to life with detail stones, bringing out those uh, foreground rocks a little bit more as well. Yeah, so look at this, similar sort of stones, just bring them out a little bit more in the sort of direction of the flow, if you like. Just a few, we don't need loads of them. And as I always say, don't be too sort of worried about where you're placing it, like stuff gets chucked around so randomly in a river, doesn't it? make this little grouping over here a bit bigger. 
I've spaced them out a bit so there's room for some planting in between them as well. Right, next up is where the magic happens. We take our detail stones and spread it about everywhere, keeping close to the rocks. I got these from Maidenhead Aquatics. I went there, they do a little mix and you can just take scoops of it. And yeah, just, just drop it all near it and it falls quite nicely, look. Drop it on top. And it, and it does what it wants, and that's what we want it to do. I don't want to be fiddling around forever, making it absolutely perfect, because to me, it never does if you do it that way. Let it fall how it wants to fall, as if it's just been pushed down the river and bounced over the top of the rock. Look at that. Oh, wow, not to you know blow my own trumpet or anything, but I absolutely love that. For me, it looks realistic, more realistic than when you have like really cre uh, clean gravel that doesn't come into the foreground at all. Do you know what I mean? I feel like this brings it to a far more natural state just by having it like sort of everywhere flicked. Now, usually at this point, people and me in the past as well have started planting. I wanna do this one a little bit differently. I wanna fill it up and then just really take my time with the planting, get every stem the right height I want it, pack it out and just make it look absolutely amazing from the start. So at this point, I'm gonna add in the second product to the tank that I use from API, and that is Aqua Essential. This is really, really good product. It just does everything that you need. So it detoxifies ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate, removes chlorine, chloramines, and heavy metals. It's good for fresh water, and it's good for salt water. So we don't need to remove nitrate um, or anything like that at the moment, but we do need to remove the chlorine or, and chloramines, heavy metals from the water. Because remember, we've got a filtration system in this. This is already set up and established. So putting chlorine through all of that, would be really bad. So stick this in, job done. There we go, give it a nice good shake up. Now for just removing the chlorine, you don't actually need a lot at all, and that will be enough. So uh, you can see that tiny little amount there, less than five mil, that bottle's gonna last for a long time, isn't it? Right, that is looking absolutely sweet. And what that means now is I can put the filter on and keep all that biological media alive, because it hasn't been off for long, do you know what I mean? So if you're gonna do this, you need to, no more than a day, I'd say, don't leave your filter off for. Some people say even less that, but I've never had any problems before when I've just left it off for a day. Okay, so we can now put the filter back on. Probably kick out a load of dirt to start with, but there we go. Just clear a bit of air, then it'll be fine. Now the water has gone kind of murky and it will continue to be murky as we plant because obviously I'm going to be disturbing the uh, substrate system. Now for that, I'm going to stick in AccuClear. This is like a cheat code. It makes your water code crystal clear. What it does is it binds all those particles together so they're quite heavy. They get sucked up by the filter and get caught all in the filter floss, but it happens so fast. Watch this. As always, give it a little shake and go by how much you need is written on the label for this one. You don't want to overdo it because it will keep your water cloudy for ages. I mean, there we go, look at that. That is the power of AccuClear. Literally, it's been about 20 minutes and it's crystal clear. Now, I'm gonna dust it up again, obviously, but it'll just, it's still in the system, so it'll keep binding it and cleaning it for me as I'm doing all this next part of the build, which is added in the plants. The very first plants, I'm gonna start getting some stems in and start building the, uh, the sort of plant layout as I go. This is completely backwards to how most people do it, how I've done it before, but I just wanna try something different. Usually you just got all the plants in there flopped over, then you know you fill the water up and it's like, Bloop, okay, that'll do for now, but I'm gonna do it like, I'm gonna be meticulous with it. <laughs> now, as always, we are gonna get things kicked off with some ferns and right here, look, we've got some awesome trident, there's some windeloft, down there as well. Now one of the good things about this wood look is there's tons of places that we can place the ferns into without having to stick them. Because ordinarily I'll stick it to stones and things and place it before we fill up with water, but I don't need to this one because this wood's got loads of little cracks and crevices we can put it in. I'm gonna keep the ferns down low because I want the uh, stems to take center stage in the top part of the tank. All right, here we go. I'm pretty sure this is gonna muddy the water up a little bit. And we've got a nice bit in that section there. Now the rhizome isn't actually being buried, it's sat on top of the sand, which means it will eventually sort of the roots will grow into the substrate system as well. And I'm gonna place another one back here, just coming forwards because this whole section here is gonna be full of plants. Another one over here in this section. Oh, this one's super healthy as well. Got that one on a rock, so that's just able to go wherever it wants. And I've got three pieces of windle off. I want those to take center stage because it's the sort of biggest detailed ones. 
like I say, look, I'm going to muddy up the water as little bits break off and older leaves like that one there, but that's all right, we can fish that all out in a minute. Okay, 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 we've got like a, what was that? It's just okay. We've got like a bowl at the bottom now of all the different ferns. I feel that works really well when you're going for lots of stems because you really can see shape the stems that then, otherwise they're gonna get covered up with those ferns, aren't they? And that's not what we want. I'm also gonna add in some Anubius as well down in these little gaps, and that should look great. A little clump of them there as well. A bit of booster philantra, oh, it's gonna look amazing. Okay, that is looking so, so sick. But now I'm thinking I need even more detail stones because it looks a little bit too clean for me. I don't like it that clean. I like it like this here, look, details. Okay, so this right here is the Denele Rio Shingu, I think it's pronounced mix. Oh, probably should have given it a dust off or clean off, <laughs> Never mind. Like I said, I just, I just want even more to that foreground. It's just way too clean. Okay, so that's massively messed up the water again. It's starting to look, I can already see it's gonna look great though, but you, it's not a problem, is it? Because, AccuClear, go. I mean, I'd love to sit and do a time-lapse of this just to show you how quick it even cleaned that up. But, well, it's already starting to clear now, to be honest, but I've got to go home now and carry on with this tomorrow. Kids are back from school and I'm starving hungry. So it's the next day, I've come into the studio and the murkiness hasn't cleared. Now, I don't think that the murkiness is from the gravel that we put in yesterday. I think it's more like bacteria die off or bloom, possibly from the substrate system or the filter because they're mature, remember, and they've just been sat around for a day. I don't really know, but I need to sort it before we carry on. So here is what I'm talking about, but not to worry, we're gonna clear it in three, two, one. Now, there we go, that's plenty good enough to carry on. Still a bit misty, but that's just, I only did a little water change. I know it's about to get cloudy again because guess what, it is stem time. Now, I have been all over the studio both studios in fact, and picked up a boatload of stems from all the different plants. We've got like Rotala, Limnophila mixes all here, which should go really good. You can buy mixes, can't you? As um, I, I remember seeing an ADA video, they did a Wabi Kusa mix of all the different stems. So I'm gonna try that for the sort of foreground effect. And then I've got those much bigger, thicker Ludwigia stems for the background and some Hygrophila uh, polysperma there. And we've got some Siamensis 53B, Rubin, Grandulose. Oh, it's so good, so good. Let's just get some of them in. Well, that took a long time. I'm glad it's done though. Some of the plants look a bit dodgy at the moment. They're all a bit over the place. They'll straighten up. They'll go towards the light within the next few days. Also, I need to get this tank clear, don't I now? I've turned the filter off whilst I was trying to plant because stuff was going everywhere and it was proving to be really difficult. Nice big red feature plant in the front here. This one is, yeah, that's uh, Ludwigia grandulose. And uh, yeah, it's just a real impactful little piece. I, I quite like that. I'm thinking about putting another one in that section. I'm not sure yet though, because I think it might, might be too much there. And I quite like this sort of openness to this, and like it goes into the embankment full of color. Yeah, I think I'll keep it like that, but we need to get it clean, don't we, for sure? Yeah, I think I'll leave it like that. We need to get it clear for sure. Filter back on, get some more AccuClear in, do a water change, all of that. And it will be clear in about an hour or so. All variety then, guys, it is the next day. Everything's crystal clear, look, you can see that, but there is an issue, one that, lots of you guys message me about and ask what to do. So I left the tank's lights on all night. They've been on like pretty much 12 hours now and that was to get the plants standing up straight which they're now starting to do. There's a few still curled around. But the issue I'm talking about, you might have spotted it already, look. Look at all this weird, gooey, bacterially, fungusy. I don't even know what it is to be honest. It's like a fungus. I think it's a fungus that grows all over the lighter parts of the wood, not on the darker parts, interestingly, just the, just the lighter parts. So how has this happened? 
I don't know. I never know. Some wood it does, some wood it doesn't. How do we get rid of it? Simple, just get a siphon, suck it all off. So it's just a case of getting your tube, give it a big suck, don't get it in your mouth. <laughs> and then you just got to go around and suck it off. Look, it comes off very, very easy. Now I've got no doubt it's going to come back quite quickly as well. But um, auto sink lists that are going in here, apparently they like munching on it. We get some snails on the go. It goes by itself eventually and it's not harmful at all to like any of the plants or the fish or... Oh, uh oh, uh oh, no, off, get off, get off. There we go. Yeah, it's not harmful to any of the uh, aquatic life or the plants or anything. You've got to be quick though, look, because the water level's coming down. <laughs> Didn't need a water change, but I guess we're having one. Oh well, won't hurt at all, will it? So have a nice water change. And there we go, tank sorted. Right then, what do you say we now go to the fish shop and get the fish for this tank? I haven't really spoken about them yet. I've had them planned for about a week now. It's a fish I never thought I could keep because I thought they chewed plants, but I'm told these ones apparently don't. Plus you keep them well fed, that sort of thing. We should be all good. Sure. Are you getting in? No, I am. Yeah. You are? Yes. You're in? Yes. You're in. Yes. Not you're in, you are in. You're in. So why are we here? We're picking up, we're picking up <laughs> fish today. Camera. We're picking up fish, but for some reason I've decided to not stand near any of the fish. Let's get this the way. Ponsor. That's because there's people here. There's people that know me. It's scary. Uh, oh, you can see down here, Martin is just building an area that we're going to be doing. Oh, that's really bright. Uh, we're going to be doing a full building here next week. So first sort of store build with Matt as well. Um, we're going to do it together with everyone's input, of course. Yeah. Sounds right. exciting. But the main reason we're here is for the new fish for the tank and they're down here. These are the tiger barbs, right Matt? Yeah, these are looking good. So last week I came in and I asked Matt what we should get and I hadn't even considered them and he brought me over and showed me them and I was like, I completely forgot. I've never had them and I, I want to keep them, so yeah. Okay, here they are Matt. Are these juveniles? Yeah, so these are really juvenile at the moment. They'll get a fair amount bigger than that. You're getting up to sort of, um, yeah, an inch or so really. Yeah, there we are. Oh, give us the finger. Yeah, so, so got a couple, of, actually, there you go. Got a couple of large ones just up in this tank. Oh yeah, okay, so they, they're adults? Yeah, pretty much. Might be a smidge bigger, but not much. They look really, really good, don't they? Yeah, really and, cool. And they look really peaceful with all the other fish as well, which is cool, even in that tight sort of area, so. As long as they've got a group to swim with, tiger barbs generally get given a bad rap most of the time, but as long as you're not keeping them with super flamboyant long fin fish, like guppies and betters and things like that, they're absolutely fine. Give them a good group to swim in, and they'll just pick on each other. They won't then try and harass anyone else. See, because I was always on the impression that no, this is why I haven't kept them before. Yeah. I always thought that they were like plant eaters and they'd absolutely just destroy all plants. <laughs> they might nip at plants. Most of the barbs will have a go and they will have a bit of vegetable matter in their diet, but they're not going to go out and absolutely sort of hammer all the plants. There are certain barbs that get a lot bigger. We'll get to the sort of, yeah, 15 centimetre, six inch mark, and those guys will lawnmower a lot of things. But <laughs> these guys are fairly good with regards to plants. Okay, these look like a different colour. Is it just the light or something? They're, they're, so, more of a sort of like yeah, a reddish. More, yeah, they're a bit brighter and what you'll probably find is there are several different strains or colour strains of tiger barbs. So you get golden, you get green, you get um, standard, you then get platinums and there's loads of different colour forms. So what you'll probably find is the guys up there that are a bit more stripy, they're probably a bit more of a wild coloration, um, yeah. a little bit more natural as it were. These guys have probably been bred to just be a little bit more orange and a little bit brighter really. I'm not complaining, I think these ones look fantastic. They are lovely, really nice. Yeah, okay, um, so a number. So remember we've got a 60 centimetre, two foot aquarium. Yeah. What do you think is a good number? I would say anything over eight is ideal really. Um, six is a minimum because of, like I say, that grouping nature and them wanting to pick on each other. But yeah, anything over eight normally works really well. Okay, sweet. Should we do eight? <laughs> yeah, we can do eight. I think that's sounds... No, good. ten. Ten's a nicer number. Ten's just a better, it's just always Double better, digits. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, bag them up. They're looking good, yeah? Yeah, they're cool, aren't they? Oh, I really, really, them. Yeah, they're, they're be so awesome. busy as well. I do love tiger bars. They were one of my first fish. Were they really? Uh, yeah, long time ago. Long so long most time. people are like, first fish, neons. I had, well no, I had goldfish. If we're going back that far, I had fancy goldfish. In a bowl? No, no, <laughs> in a two foot. But I did upgrade them eventually. Well, were, yeah, that's the, yeah. Tiny. I mean, one got stuck in a the, castle once, his, and I had to get him out. It was well sad. Oh no, yeah. he was oh, alright. Oh, he was okay. Yeah, okay. he was okay. See, that's the thing with this hobby. It's like that that fish must be in a eight foot tank, and it's like no one's going to get into it if they know, like if if they have to do that from when they're young. 
as long as they understand it's going to and are willing to upgrade, I think that's where the... Yeah, exactly. It's all about, you know, everyone's got to start somewhere and yeah, it's just part of, part of the hobby really. But as long as you know what the needs are of the animals later on, you know, very much like some of your tanks where you're going to move them up later or yeah. if you get too many babies, you can rehome them. It's just part and parcel of the hobby really. Exactly. Right, let's get these fish home. Because this is not home. This is a bag. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying now. Poor little chat. <laughs> okay, whilst I'm here, I'm thinking I want to buy one more piece of wood to fill out one of the sections uh, because that middle part, I just feel like it's missing something. I don't want anything too big. So something like this might work perfectly just coming up. Yeah, I'll take that. Right back from the fish shop, we've got the fish. They're all safe, by the way, they're just down here. Before we put the fish in, I just want to get that piece of wood and put it where I think it needs to go. Now, I might be completely wrong, but I feel like it needs something in that gap. Some people will say it doesn't. I mean, it's your hobby, do what you want of your stuff as long as you're enjoying it. You know what I mean? Just do whatever you think is right, and it is right. <laughs> right, everything looking good, except for I feel like there should be a piece of wood in this section and then maybe a little piece of the uh, Java fern on it as well. Just a little one, just bringing some more height in that area. I feel like we're lacking quite a lot in that, that particular part. So yeah, here is said piece of wood covered in air bubbles. And I'm just trying to make a space in there just so you guys can see what I mean. Ugh, get in. Well, that's working out perfect straight away. I did test this, this wood. It will try and float because the air bubbles, but it, it will sink if there's no air bubbles. So I'm just shaking most of them off. I think that looks good. Oh yeah, like in that, bit of a squared off top on it. You win some, you lose some. I'm not too worried though. It's just, I felt like there was something missing in that area and now there definitely isn't. The plants will eventually grow all around it anyway. But for now, that has completed the look in my eyes and made it like, sort of like a finished product. I, d I don't know, whatever. Right, we can put some fish in, can't we? And here they come, first job, getting used to the temperature of this tank. Um, it won't take long at all actually because the temperature in here is pretty much the same as outside at the moment, which is awesome. We'll give them 20 minutes or so, just to be sure though. Right, 20 minutes up, temperature's definitely matching by now, let's do this. Right, take them out carefully. Don't want to knock over that wood I've just put in. There we go, got them out. Pop the bag. Wee. It's the best pop I've had in a while. Pull them into the net. Always look back in and make sure you've got them all, yep. And now we can release them. Right, it's now time to put these awesome fish in. I'm really keen to see how they get on because I've never kept them before. I want to see what their behavior's like. Straight away, they're looking chilled. Oh, look at that, they huddle together so nicely. Now, Matt did say that they behave really nicely as a group and instantly that's what we're seeing. I'm well happy with that. And they're using these little areas that I've created for them. Look, like that little gap down there. How cool is that? Yay, they love it. <laughs> Hi guys, yeah, I'm loving you straight away. Look at the colours, really, really good colours as well. They're not even coloured up properly yet. That will get better and better as time goes by. And remember, it's not just the tiger barbs. We've got lovely little nearites now here. You need to place them like this so they're not upside down, guys, because they can't turn over, apparently. I didn't even know that until uh, um, someone commented once in one of my videos. So yeah, we'll just place them upright. God, the tiger barbs are chill, look. Look, my hand's near them, they're not even bothered. <laughs> and then I've got three auto sinkless and three Amano shrimp as well, look. And not to forget what I like to put in every tank, ram's horn snails. Look at that. <laughs> All different colors, perfect. Now with the fungus and the lighting levels, these snails, cleanup crew in general, will have stuff to peck at in no time at all. They'll keep right on top of it, just the three of each, apart from the snails. I mean, they'll create waste as well. Tiger barbs coming right to the front of the tank, look. God, they're a stunning fish, aren't they? They're proper fish fish, do you know what I mean? You look like that's how you draw a fish if you're like a small child or anyone to be honest, someone said to me draw a fish, that would be the exact shape. So even though we've got a fully cycled filter in this tank and also all that media that we reused as well, when you put new fish in as standard, I always add in beneficial bacteria. This is quick start from API. I always use it and I never get fish losses. Like it's absolutely amazing stuff. It's a cheat code. Just do what it says on the back and your fish will be absolutely perfect. So for this size tank, I'm going with one, two capsules. And on top of that, I will also be doing daily testing with the Freshwater Master Test Kit from API. This covers everything you need for the health and safety of your fish. So in the morning, I'll come in, I'll do a test. If I need a water change, I'll do it. And then I'll add more of the quick start as well. If I don't, then I won't. Now with how established the filter is combined with these plants and the quick start, I'm pretty sure I'll come in tomorrow and there'll be nothing. There'll be no trace of any ammonia or nitrite, anything like that. So we're gonna be all good to just continue. Oh, look at them. 
Look at them, look how awesome they are. And let's remember how many plants we've actually got in this system. So we're gonna need our leaf zone. This is the only fertilizer I use in all my tanks, guys. And uh, I'm pretty sure the results just speak for themselves, don't they? Considering this is all low tech, no CO2 in any of my systems. All we have is some budget lighting on every single one of my tanks leaf zone, root tabs, quick, you know, all these products that I use, I'm happy to sell them to you because that's essentially what I'm doing because they work so well and you will not be disappointed. Give the bottle a good shake. And for this size tank, we just need one capful. Look at that, all going into the water column, it'll get in everywhere, obviously, and mix itself with the flow and we are ready to go. So I literally don't know why I have not got these fish before. Look at how gorgeous they are. These fish are classed as a sort of easy to moderate level of fish to keep. They don't get too big, but they can be slightly aggressive apparently, but keeping them in a large enough group should stop that. Now this type of barb has four bands on it and that's different from the others which have five or six. Apparently you can get variations of colours as well, um, but I don't think they differ too much. Now I guess one of the most enjoyable things about them is that they're quite boisterous and like sort of semi-aggressive, but because they're so small, they're not really going to do any damage to other fish. Apparently five of them is the absolute bare minimum, but they prefer to be lo no less than eight and no more than 12 in a group. So we've got 10 bang on right in the middle, which is perfect. You're much more likely to get that aggression and that harassment of other fish if you keep them in groups too small. Now they don't get huge either, they grow about a maximum of 2.5 inches long, and the females are slightly larger than the males with rounder bodies and like duller colors as well. So tiger barbs are usually found in lakes, swamps, and like small streams. That's why I've tried to go for that small stream look here with the small pebbles, and uh, you know, fallen wood. So they live in any depth of the water and they can be, you know, in high light, low light, depending where they are. They tend to prefer the shallow waters, which are usually more murky and acidic due to the decaying plant material and algae. And the wood that we put in this tank is gonna leach tannins and sort of create that acidic, murky look as well over time. So the barbs should be kept at tropical temperatures with a pH of six to eight. Our pH is bang on seven, so that's in the middle of that. And temperature wise, I set the room to tropical temperatures. That's why you can't see any heaters in the tank. Now, many of you know I'm a massive fan of of nano fish. Now I class these at the upper end of nano. I guess a true nano would be kept in a tank half this size. You wouldn't want to put these fish in a 30 centimeter or one foot tank, would you? But the tank they're in the 60 centimeter two foot one is one of the most popular sizes in the hobby. And I think it's just right for normal sort of size households. If you've got a flat something like that, you can have a 60 centimeter tank, can't you? If you've got a big house, you can have one as well, like a dining room or something like that. But anyway, I'm massively impressed with these fish. They're even more beautiful than I thought they was gonna be, sparkling beautifully under our lights. And once you get them in a planted tank like this, their behavior comes alive.